Medical professionals of Reddit, when did you have to tell a patient I've seen it all before to comfort them, but really you had never seen something so bad, or of that nature? In dental school, I had an emergency patient come in, complaining of sore gums. Upon examination, I found a massive calculus bridge. Google it for pictures behind her lower front teeth. She only had about three remaining lower teeth, but they were all connected with a whitish brown mineral deposit that was about the size of a golf ball. She had never had her teeth cleaned and she was probably 55 or so. I basically performed an emergency cleaning. She could speak so much better afterwards. Of course I had to play it off like it was normal, but in my years of practice I still haven't seen a case that bad again. Get your teeth cleaned people. Even if you can't afford every 6 months, once a year, or every other year is a heck of a lot better than never. I had a lady come into the listed as multiple medical problems. This usually means diabetes and the issues stemming from it or maybe bleeding issues from another disease or maybe odd blood tests results at a clinic. I hadn't seen the patient yet, but the doctor came to the nurse's station asking who had room 15. I jumped up and followed him into the room. I walked in and saw what I thought was a corpse. Then the patient's eye swiveled over to look at me. She truly looked like one of the people they found in a concentration camp. I could see every bone and her body was twisted in a decorticate position with her jaw locked open. Then the smell hit me. Rotting flesh, death, and body fluids. I struggled to keep a neutral face and not gag. I tried to place a blood pressure cuff on her arm and her skin just started flaking off in my hands. I gagged. The doctor started removing her clothes to examine her. Her feet were black to the ankles. Her hip bones were poking through her skin and were black. The skin around her ribs was worn away to using muscle fibers. Her calves were incredibly swollen and the skin was splitting like ripped pants. I removed her depends and there was fesses coating her entire genital area. Then the doctor went to remove a large bandage on her lower back. Her entire sacrum was exposed and the bones were black. The skin around it was a black liquefied mass. It smelled like nothing I've ever smelled. I can't even describe it. The doctor told her family I would clean up her ulcers and wounds in preparation for surgery. Liar. No surgeon would operate on her. I had no idea how to clean dead bone tissue and liquefied skin. They don't cover that in nursing school. When I went to clean her sacral area, all the liquefied skin separated and oozed all over the bed. I really struggled to keep my crap together. Afterwards, I needed a moment in the supply closet to cry it out for a second. I had no idea the human body could break down so much without dying. I still think about that woman sometimes and what led to her living like that. It still breaks my heart. Whoa. I would love some more info on this if anybody else has any idea what went on here. I honestly can't even imagine the things you're describing, let alone what could possibly happen in a person's life to lead to such overwhelming deterioration of the body. I'm a nurse and I work in a pediatrica. A young woman brought her baby in to be seen for vomiting. I ask her to put the baby on the scale. While on the scale I notice a strong odor of bug spray so I asked about it. Mom. A roach crawled into her mouth so I sprayed a little radium there. She said it matter of factually like it was no big deal. Cup calls to the police. CPS and a one. One sitter for the child in the mom. When all was said and done the baby was fine and turned over to her grandmother so no worries there. I have no idea what happened to the mother. I don't believe she was intending to hurt the child. I think she was just but ass ignorant. Five years ago I spent six months working in a small rural Zambian hospital in the medical ward as part of a volunteer outreach program. I have done mostly family medicine, some surgery in my early days, but decided to mix life up a bit. The hospital was typical third world, a few basic medications, rudimentary clinical tools, a small lab on site which was usually broken, no resuscitation tools whatsoever, HIV, TB and malaria was rife. It would not be uncommon to encounter a death per day despite our best efforts. On one of my first days there an unconscious person was carried in by a mob of locals. I could smell him before I saw him because he had been in a house fire and his skin was cooked. Completely black around his chest, face and over his legs. He was still breathing on his own and maintaining his airway but we had no doubt he had inhaled a lot of smoke. 
with no way to interbut or provide oxygen we merely had to hope that he didn't swell up and close off, and deal with the rest of the burns while he was unconscious. Two colleagues who worked in the hospital came over urgently. We all kept our cool externally and got the nurses to translate to the man's family that we were going to do everything we could to get him better. In reality all three of us knew his chances at survival were in the single digit percentages. We decided that due to the extent of his burns we were going to have to do an escheratomy, cutting the burnt skin to prevent it contracting and stopping him from breathing. Turns out I had the most surgical experience so despite having never done one before I gave it a go, hoping for the best. We got an IV into a neck vein and got fluids going. The local nurses dressed his burns. We gave him whatever pain relief we had. He was unconscious for a couple of days but eventually came to. Each day we were expecting his kidneys to pack up but to our surprise, gradually he got better. He was with us for just over 4 months recovering. He came out severely scarred but he had beaten the odds and survived. It's interesting you even had enough fluids and dressings to keep this guy alive. Well done. I remember working with some nurses from PNG that had come over to us to get some extra experience. Someone like that. Back then, 90s, they wouldn't even try. They just didn't have the resources. I was young and idealistic, and was shocked. This one of those threads you hate yourself for reading but can't stop. I showed up to a house for a possible overdose. Three firefighters and a police officer were on top of a man who was prone and naked from the waist down. They immediately told my partner and I to restrain the patient to the gunny because the patient was combative. It turns out he took something thinking it was weed but turned out to be laced with something else, possibly PCP. During his trip he attempted to cut his penis off, but wasn't successful. As fate would have it, I knew the patient personally and tried to comfort him on the way to the hospital. During the ride he became somewhat cognizant and was ashamed of himself. I tried to comfort him as I held his penis in place. I would be lying if I said I had seen a severed penis before. I worked as a mental health tech to get through undergrad. 15F in the adolescent ward claims to have swallowed a staple. A, hey, but whatever. As I'm taking her down to x-ray I tell her about the dime I swallowed when I was a kid. It happens. Well, turns out she underestimated the number of staples by around a hundred. Every printout given by the therapists had been a swallowed staple. She had gotten staples from the other kids. The x-ray of her abdomen looked as if it were a weird staple Y snow globe. And yet, somehow, she was back to trying to steal psych ward staples a week later. Never did figure out how they removed them all. Never did figure out how they removed them all. With a staple remover. Not the worst, but I had a patient once with a stomach bleed and a small bowel obstruction. We had to put in an NG tube. Tube that goes in your nose and down to your stomach. To drain decompress his stomach. Which was pretty distended and hard. I'm inserting the tube and as soon as it hits this guy's gag reflex he projectile vomits and sprays very dark. Half digested blood all over himself. The bed. The wall and the floor. It's basically a scene from the exorcist. I had to dive out of the way and somehow was unscathed. He couldn't stop for almost 10 minutes as we're trying to get this thing down to where it needs to go. It finally finished placement and it immediately suctions out 3 liters of this black sludge that is old, digested blood. PT was mortified and we had to play it off like oh no no it's fine. It's really common to vomit during the procedure. We'll just go get some towels and clean you up. My co-worker and I left the room and just stared at each other in silent shock. My daughter, who was 3 at the time, had to have a cavity filled. As we were leaving, the dentist told me just to watch my daughter because sometimes kids chew their gums because it's numb and feels weird. So the drive home took 30 minutes and I had been talking to my daughter the entire time to keep her busy. I parked my car in my driveway, opened the passenger seat to get my daughter out, and her entire lower lip on the left side is gone. She had chewed it off down to her chin. She ended up in emergency surgery, but the surgeon kept telling us it would be fine and he sees this stuff all the time. She ended up having multiple surgeries, and when she was finally healed, the surgeon told us that it was the worst injury like that he had ever seen. He wasn't sure how she would heal, but you can hardly tell it happened now. Not a medical professional, but a story about my father. After years of a blood disease, his spleen had to be removed as it had swollen to a size that made breathing difficult. Apparently the surgeon had a photo taken, 
post extraction, where he is cradling my dad's 22.0 lb spleen. To top it off, one day into recovery, when doing one of those gentle push on the abdomen type exams on him, my dad sutures catastrophically failed and he let loose a spray that coated the doctor, his nurse, and a good portion of the ceiling. Luckily for dad, the hospital staff was on point that day and kept him alive despite his body's best effort. I heard all of this from the doctor while he was removing the line of staples that went from crotch to sternum. Some weeks later, dad didn't like to share, apparently. Had a patient who needed a lower G study to find fix a bowel bleed. To get a study done you need to poop clear mucus. Three days we bowel prepped with heavy laxatives and enemas. He barely pooped anything. He puts on the call light at 6.45, 15 minutes before my shift ends. He calmly says, I kinda want to try and poop. He said it so casually I figured he was going to toot out another gas bubble and walk back. He stood from the bed, took one step, and the floodgates burst. Three plus days of the most rancid liquid stool I had ever encountered. It just wouldn't stop. He left a river of stool from the bed to the bathroom, coated the walls as he bent to park his bus on the toilet, and continued to dump out 7 people worth of poop. In my 9 years I have never seen that much come out of a person. He was not a large man. He was so embarrassed but I just kept my face as solid as possible, grabbed half the linen closet and 3 packages of cavi wipes, and sopped it up. I told him this happens all the time. I was caring for my mom at home and she had a lot of bowel problems. This happened to her in bed. She got up and walked down the hall to her bathroom and back. I cleaned it up and told her it wasn't a big deal. She was so embarrassed. I still refer to it as the poop storm of 2008. Looked like someone used a fire hose and painted the travel path. I miss her but not that event. Lots of stories. Many already covered by others. I will share this particular story with my legs crossed. Motorcyclist came in after someone left turned without checking. He had gone over the hood, slid and somehow somersaulted landing on his ass sitting up. He slid across intersection mostly on his ass, getting serious road rash. Luckily he was only a block from hospital and ambulance. They pack him and bring him to the air. We end up cutting off his chaps and jeans and begin the cleanup of gravel and sand embedded in his thighs and ass when all of a sudden, his testicles fall out of his scrotum. He had basically sandpapered a hole in his scrotum while skidding on his ass. The attending pauses, grabs the saline, irrigates scrotum and nuts, fondles them back into place while humming. I handed him some gauze to pack the wound and smiled at the patient who was under a local. Then I went on break, went fetal and dry heaved. While humming, this seems to be a common trick for doctors. Till not the worst is always the worst, and if the doctor hums you're pretty much crap out of luck. Years ago, 2000, I was playing soccer and noticed a little skin irritation underneath my arm. I thought it would go away but it developed into a weird thing. It was about 2 inches in diameter and grew to be a collection of essentially looked like hundreds of skin tags grew together in a little circle. I went to the doctor who didn't have a clue and he sent me to a specialist. While there it seemed like he didn't know either. This was further evidenced when 4 other doctors came in to take a look and were really interested. They took a ton of photos and told me they hadn't seen this before and couldn't really offer any medication and said they would monitor it. About a week later the skin tags developed little circles on the top that turned into scabs within a couple days. Then, the thing just kinda dried up and fell off me. It was freaking weird and to this day I have no idea what it was. I was not comforted. I had to have my leg rebuilt after a car accident and was eventually sent to Duke University for my surgery. My surgeon was supposed to be like the best orthopedic surgeon in the country. I think he used to work for the Baltimore Ravens. Anyway all the doctors from my hospital at home were very unsure if I would even have a functioning leg let alone walk normal again. The first appointment at Duke that dude told me it was really not a big deal and he would have me fixed almost good as new. I honestly thought he was just trying to be nice and optimistic but he was very serious. Five months later I was walking and learning how to run again. He said I was one of the most complicated surgeries he has had to do and a group of surgeons flew in to observe him do it. The dude was either super confident in his skills or a great liar. I will go with super confident since he called in a team to marvel at his work. 
My aunt started her nursing career in a county hospital, which means you get all the homeless folks. A guy came in with the whole of the back of his leg and butt utterly and very deeply infested with maggots. He just hadn't gotten around to coming in earlier, he said. The depressing thing is that while it was a first for my aunt, it was by no means the last. Apparently it's more common than you think. A huge subset of the population we treat are uninsured, blue collar, low educated people, a lot of smoking and diabetic non-compliance, that sort of thing. Therefore we end up seeing a lot of what happens with diseases if you never treat them and let them run their natural course to end stage. We've had so many diabetic foot and toe amputations I've lost count. However one lady that sticks out had a huge area of loculated, necrotic tissue on her low back. Usually you'll have a foul smell and purplish black overlying tissue to tip you off. This lady's back had several areas that got so gangrenous and necrotic that there were basically just large pockets down to her subcutaneous fat and muscle. The appearance resembled a sponge with large holes that was filled to capacity with pus. The smell was indescribably atrocious. What made it worse was every time we cleaned out a pocket, we would probe with a finger and it would lead to another freaking pocket of pus and the smell would double up again. Unfortunately she lost nearly all the skin on her low back down to muscle bone in some places. We slapped a huge wound vac on it and she ended up being shipped out to a specialist center. Took forever for the smell to leave my nostrils. You have spotted this beautiful tasty sea of bacon. You can have as much as you want as long as you subscribe in the next 22 seconds. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.